The debate in Washington over health care insurance reform is really heating up now. Democrats are making repeated attempts to come up with a plan that will overcome objections by some of their own members and nearly every member of the Republican Party. We talked about health care with Senator Jeff Bingaman a bit earlier. He sits on several committees involved with coming up with a plan. He says he favors a plan that would have a public option as well as a conventional option that would continue to provide coverage from private insurance companies. I asked him what he's hearing from businesses. Are they really interested in keeping the plans they now pay for? Well, of course, at this point, uh, there is no requirement on them to uh, pay anything if they do not have uh, insurance coverage for their employees. Uh, if we put in place a requirement for all employees to obtain coverage and a requirement that employers contribute something uh, to cover the cost of health care as well, then uh, uh, then I think it is important to have this grandfathering provision, which says if you've got a plan you like now, just keep it in place and you can renew it and uh, and you're not obligated to change anything you're doing. I think that's that's quite important to the employers that have talked to me. So employers who now offer health insurance for their employees, you believe, would gladly opt in to continuing to pay for those plans? Well, I think they're, they're be, being given, they would be given under these legislative proposals, the opportunity to keep in place the plans they've got now and, uh, and renew those uh, uh, as often as they want or as many times as they want. Uh, I think that they like the assurance of knowing that that's an option. Now, they, they obviously would look at, at what kind of alternatives would be there for their employees, uh, and if the employees had better alternatives that were outside of the employer's health care plan, uh, they might, they might uh, change, their, change their course and not provide coverage in the future. And, and we need to... Uh, we need to look at that eventuality, too. Uh, is this new plan for health co-ops on the table now, co-ops that would be set up in each state? Well, this is one of the proposals. Uh, Senator Conrad uh, from North Dakota has recommended we we go with that kind of a proposal. I, I think it makes some sense to look at that. Uh, I have no problem with us uh, providing health care through a co-op structure, uh, I think one of the, the key issues is whether we just have state-by-state state co-ops or whether we also allow regional co-ops or perhaps have a national co-op. And I think in order to have a viable competitor with uh, uh, private health insurance companies, uh, a lot of folks have advised us that they think some kind of national uh, co-op would be more appropriate. So that's one of the issues we're looking at. They've failed otherwise, haven't they, the ones that have been in existence to date? Well, I think some have failed, but uh, I think some are, are successful and are, are doing reasonably well. So uh, I, I think that if, if it's properly capitalized uh, to start with, which a co-op would have to be, as would any kind of public plan, in my view, uh, and then it were well operated, well managed, and uh, and provided good services uh, for the premiums people paid, I think uh, I see no reason why it couldn't compete with the private insurance carriers. Why do you think the Pharmaceutical Association came up with the idea of discounting drugs uh, and turning $80 billion back to health care payers? Well, I think that uh, what's involved there is a little bit uh, different than what has been largely reported in that, uh, as I understand it, they've indicated that they've, they've identified ways in which they think the government would be charged less, uh, $80 billion less over the next 10 years uh, for the drugs that, they, uh, that the government is, is obtaining for Medicare and Medicaid. And, uh, and I think that's... Although that sounds like a very large number, it's not that, that enormous a number when you compare it to the total cost for prescription drugs over the next 10 years. They would discount drugs for the government. That would be in violation of the law that the Congress passed, saying there could be no discounts for government entities? Well, I, I think that the essentially what they would be doing would be to 
agree to uh, to prices for the government, just as they agree to prices for the private insurance companies. And uh, I have favored allowing the government to negotiate prices for drugs, just as they negotiate prices for other other health care services. But that was overturned early on in the, during the Bush administration when the Congress voted not to allow the government to negotiate prices. Well, that, that is true for prescription drugs, but uh, I think that what you're seeing here is that the, the health care industry or the ph- pharmaceutical industry is coming back and saying, uh, yes, they, they can agree that they will reduce prices uh, to the government by this amount. Senator Jeff Bingaman on the line a bit earlier from Washington.